another Aligner Insider podcast. Well, hello, everybody in podcast land. This is another Aligner Insider podcast. And I am Dean Steinman. And to my right today is the world famous Dr. Barry Glazer. And welcome, Barry. Welcome, everybody in podcast land. How are you today? I'm doing great. Um, how are you doing? Hanging in there. You know, the mm-hmm. uh, I believe it, it's the end of January already, 2021. Um, and things are are rolling. You, you know, business, thank God, is good. Um, clients are seeing more and more patients than ever before. People are having a banner year as they did last year, even though they were closed. And things seem to be busy this year as well. So, um, and how about you? How is things as far as your business um, so far this year? Business has been steady, uh, okay. which um, you're happy about. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seems like we're getting off to a, a good start uh, in 2021. It's um, it's amazing, you know, that people, patients are still you know, willing to come to the practice and um, you know, come in for new patient exams and get their treatment started. So that uh, it was a big fear of mine when the pandemic first hit that you know, people just not more going to want to go out of the house. But it really hasn't been, you know, when, once the shutdown was over, which started, we, we were our shutdown for us was over beginning of June of 2020. It was really, I mean, kind of business as usual. Certainly we've made all the, all the changes in the office as far as the screening and the social distancing and, you know, all the other you know, infection control protocols that we've introduced uh, in, in addition to the stuff that we were doing before. So it's it's different than it was before, but we're, we're, we're open. <laughs> we're making, we're, we're making money yeah. and treating patients and making smiles. So I, you know, what, what, what's to complain about? There you go. Great. So we're going to jump on that there. So um, obviously over the last eight, nine months, you had to adapt your business. I had to adapt my business. And for those of you out there that have adapted your business, you understand what we're talking about. Those who have not, listen carefully. Okay, we've mentioned this many, many times before. And I'm going to, and I'm going to let you say the quote now is from the great Billy Bean. And that is? You either adapt or die. Exactly. And you must adapt your practice to the, the times. Okay. Prior to March 2020, that is in the history books. We will never see those days again, okay? We're in a new world. And moving forward, God willing, things will open up a bit, but still people are in this new bubble. And I, I foresee this to be here for a long time. So there are certain protocols that you need to do as a business owner in general, not even just an orthodontic, but as a business owner in general, um, to adapt or die. So let's talk about two of the biggest changes that you made, Barry, in your practice over the last seven, eight months, and how did they affect your business? All right, so let's we'll pick one that comes to mind, and that's starting to offer virtual consultations via the SmileSnap platform. Okay, and um, so virtual consultations is just what it sounds like. Now people can come to your office without coming to your office. <laughs> they can submit their pictures. They can let you know a little bit about what they're looking for. And you can analyze their smile, analyze their teeth without them coming in. To, that, to a degree. That... So mm-hmm. it's interesting. I, I think maybe we should invent another term other than virtual consultations. Because now uh, in my office, we all, I've always called a new patient exam a consultation. I know in some offices, a new patient exam and a consultation might be different. but for, So we'll just call it virtual new patient exam. So that's not really, Dean, what we're doing. Um, because we were a, a new patient exam still... Uh, requires some old school thought. New patient exam still requires a you to do a clinical examination of the patient, you know, of their occlusion, of their joints, of their hard and soft tissues, periodontal status, malocclusion, all of that kind of stuff. So a good clinical exam is really something at this point that you can't do with a smartphone photo. Uh, certainly x-ray studies need to be done. Um, those kinds of things still need to be done face to face. So we're calling them virtual consultations, but I, and the reason I'm making this, um, Dean, this distinction is that there are some in the orthodontic profession that are very much 
up in arms over the idea of virtual consultations you know, with, with the idea that how are you supposed to diagnose and treatment plan a patient using their phone? And, and the answer is you really can't. So right. let's, let's, let, let me just explain what a virtual consultation is and what it isn't. So virtual consultation is a way to, it's a patient acquisition. It's a marketing platform. It's a way to, to connect with potential patients that you might not be able to connect with otherwise. So you're using an online platform, you have an initial contact with a patient and you can gather some basic information like what they're looking to do and what their chief complaint is, maybe what their budget is, you know, those, what, what kind of appliances they're interested in. So it allows you, and also very, very critical information like their email address, their cell phone number, so that you can now reach out to them. So you're gathering demographic information about the patients. They can or cannot submit photos, and you can really do it either way. But if you get some smartphone photos, it gives you of just a basic look. For example, last last week we had a patient all gung-ho wanted to start, but when I took a look at the photos, even by using their smartphone, they were missing a lot of teeth, had cavities, you know, had probably had a cleaning in years, periodontal disease, and we referred that patient out. So anyway, it's a patient acquisition tool. And starting in when when did we get set up? Maybe the beginning of April? About uh, that. So you have the beginning of April 2020. Now it is um, Tuesday. January 26, 2021. So far, we've started from that platform, 21 patients. Hmm. That's so, pretty remarkable. Think about it, guys. That's, that's six figures of, of income coming in yep. using t- new technologies that you wouldn't have had before. Right. You know, and let me even back up. You know, it, there are four steps in the, the, the in the orthodontic inpatient journey. The first is let's call it the consult to see if patient is ready for orthodontics, can afford it, you know, is it blah, 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 blah. That's the, the first step. That's the consult. And that can be done, as you said, virtually online, just to make sure that they even are worth or for them or you to take the next step, mm-hmm. you know, then obviously they need to come into the office for their exam. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they need to come in there. Um, and then moving, moving forward, you've got, the ability to to monitor them and to keep track of them virtually as, as well using new technologies, um, you know, and then follow ups from there. Um, so realistically, you, by using new technologies and, and adapting, you can give people the smile they want, give them the braces they want, without them having to take come into the office, without them having to be worried about you know what's going on in the world, and still be able to do it based upon you know the procedures that, that you have that you have in place right so, so you just to maybe to re- refine that a little bit so there are times where they still you know there are times where you have to lay your hands on the patients so there are going to be certain touch points that are still critical to be a good orthodontist and provide right. the patient with good treatment so you have to see them for a scan you have to see them again for clinical exam uh, x-rays you're going to need to see them periodically for let's say new scans, placing attachments, if you're treating, we were talking about Invisalign here. So you're going to still, you're going to reduce the number of times they'd come to the office, but not eliminate it, you know, uh, at, at this point in time, that's Correct. technology. Right. But mm-hmm. that's a good thing. It's a good thing for so right. many reasons. It's a good thing because uh, we, we want to, you know, we're required to, to minimize the patient flow in our office to, to keep with social distancing requirements. You know, now there's this new variant, there's several new variants of the coronavirus, which apparently are, are even more contagious. So right. you know, just another reason to make sure that you limit the number of people in the office. Um, and both me, my staff, and my family, as well as my patients appreciate that. Uh, but even before then, you know, or even after the pandemic, hopefully you know, we're going to come to live with it at some point, but um, go back to more of a normal lifestyle. But both parents very often are both working full-time jobs. Mm-hmm. Kids are going to school, uh, you know, and you know today that that kids are have tons of after-school activities, whether it's sports or you know, you know, religious activities or whatever it is. So people are just more busy than ever, and this is a way to still provide what I think is the highest level of care, but do it in a way that adapts to the current situation. I mean, think about do you think about like any company that you can think of, you know, what what major Fortune 500 company is doing business exactly the same way that they did, let's let's say 20 years ago, but even let's say five years ago, 
And, and I mean, they have to keep so, them, right? one year ago. <laughs> I mean, IBM it doesn't sell electric typewriters anymore. And right. <laughs> and I, I, listen, I mean, orthodontics. I mean, the fundamentals of you know biomechanics and you know good treatment. Those fundamentals don't change. But how we deliver those fundamentals, I think it's important that we keep up with the times sure. and make sure that we're accommodating our patients. And and by the way, you know, the, the, in, in accommodating our patients, we're also being more efficient in the office and it, it improves my bottom line too. Right, exactly, which is important. That's what we get up every, we get up every morning and go to work for that there. So, you know, and, and I'm going to back up and put, talk a little bit about, you know, the process here and, and, and the the functionality of, of, of virtual work and um, new technologies. And at the end of the day, guys, it all runs through your website. Your website is now a living, breathing creature. And you have to have your website being able to talk to your patients and give them the ability to communicate with them on their level and their time, not yours. So, you know, for example, on Dr. Glazer's website, people can chat on the website they can schedule an appointment they can they can do the the, the virtual consult on it they're all done on the web on the website without the practice having getting involved that's the beautiful thing about it is patient you the public wants immediate gratification now okay we're all <laughs> that's the one thing the millennials rubbed off on all of us okay mm-hmm. is think about it if you wanted to go to a restaurant and you wanted to make a re- reservation if you can't schedule that reservation or if you don't hear back from the restaurant within an hour you're going to go to somewhere else mm-hmm. well same thing with with an authentic practice if you, if you don't hear back from the practice you can't get the information you want you're gone all right and you know somebody else so that's where you have to have the ability on you you know to adapt and change and make your website the living breathing breathing creature as well and um that's super super important to do so um you know what's interesting and just just talking about this and listen there you know there's a there's a group of of orthodontics that tend to be more conservative and listen i don't i'm i think it's a good thing to be conservative but maybe to the point where they're afraid of change or afraid you want to keep things the same try to hold on to like the old-fashioned technologies but those same doctors are they aren't they using uber aren't they ordering doordash or instacart (laughs) Or, or, you know, Uber Eats. Like, so all these same doctors expect to be able to, let's say, book an airline ticket right from their phone or expect, you know, customer service you know, immediately. And so they expect all these companies around them that they work with to sort of deal with them on a much more convenient basis. But yet they want to do the same old, same old in their practice. I find that interesting that it's like, you know, you, you expect a certain level of service for yourself, but you don't want to then turn around and change your practice to give that same level of service that you expect to your own patients. I think it's kind of funny. It, it, it is. You know, it's funny to work, work with a lot of practices. And, you know, same thing is overall just in marketing in general. You know, I'm like, well, I don't want to be on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't need, you know, well, you're not on Facebook, but your patients are. OK, you might not, you know be wanting to let them do this virtually, but that's what they want. So it's up to you to adapt, you know, adapt, 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 guys. And it's super important to do so. And that's kind of where, you know, from a marketing standpoint, we've adapted and we've put all all of our efforts into making websites more effective and more efficient, making them be found more on Google, having all the, the possible bells and whistles that needed to make you a successful practice. And this is what we spend all our, most of our time working on as far as coming up with new platforms and ideas. And the same thing with, with your, your office. You need to make sure you have the right protocols in place, um, the right platforms in place, the right technologies in place to not only adapt, but thrive. Yeah. Um, because, it's the golden you rule, right? Do unto, do unto others as you would have you know, done unto you. Exactly. And I think that maybe sometimes... It's easier to again expect that that you, you it's easier to expect that you should be able to just go onto your phone and order Uber Eats and or, or or DoorDash, you know, and a bag of food magically shows up on your doorstep 45 minutes later, but then turn around and say, you, you, you know, that you know, it's still let's say not even do a one-step consult where the patient maybe has to come into your office two or three times just to get a fee. You know, that's how right. we used to do it. The patient would come in for a consult. Then we would read, this is way back. Then we would reschedule them for records. Then they'd have to come in for a case discussion. You know, So this is now three, probably at least 45 minute appointments out of their life. And they still don't even know how much it costs. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, so this is all part. And, and once again, if you don't do it, somebody else will. 
Okay, if you are not the leader, if you're not offering what needs to be offered, if you're not making things easy for people to schedule, to do your consult, to get follow-ups, to make to be able to get great results using you know certain technologies after you know especially moving forward, um, like dental monitoring and other programs like that, then you're, you're going to lose out. Plain and simple, you will, and and you're only you know cutting off your nose to spite your face, and your face looks pretty good with your nose on it, so keep it there. <laughs> Exactly. You know, yeah. I actually sir, I took went back and I looked at the 21 patients that have so far started you know, by the acquisition through SmileSnap, and more than half of those patients, one of the questions is, you know, how did you find out out of practice? More than half of those patients said Instagram, which is funny because like a couple of weeks ago, I was like, ah, Dean, Instagram's a waste of time. Well, I guess it isn't a waste of time. Exactly. <laughs> so, so we're said that. Maybe 10 patients that came to us through Instagram. A bunch of the other 11 patients, probably half said internet or something along those lines. So it's interesting to see how all of the, the marketing dollars that I'm spending and, and the marketing efforts that you're you're doing for my practice dovetails with something like smile snap so it's like the online people that might think about orthodontic treatment when they see a before and after that we've posted on instagram are the same type of people that want to do a virtual consult and it makes sense right exactly it, it does and you have to be able to put it out there and you can also just sit back guys and, and hope and wait you need to be proactive on promoting these services and pushing it out there on the website, on the social media to people so they know it's there and they'll the ability to do so because otherwise it's gonna they're gonna pass right by it. Um, the average person no, needs to know within four seconds who you are, what you're doing, how to contact you. And if it's not right in their face and they have to look around and see how to find your, your virtual consult or how to schedule your appointment, they're gone. Right. So it's real important to um, make sure that that works across the board and, you know, our website, you know, works fast and works great and uh, is the number one source of the pa new patients coming through, you know, plain and simple, you know, so it's real important, you know, for that to happen. This podcast is brought to you by Ortho Marketing. Ortho Marketing is a full service digital marketing agency exclusively for dentists and orthodontists, providing website design, social media management, search engine optimization, and digital advertising. For more information, visit orthomarketing.com. I got a question for you, Dean. Have you ever used an online service to buy a car? I have not. personally, because that's you can actually now go ahead and purchase a car without ever setting foot in a dealership. Which I mean, I love a new car, but I I do not care. <laughs> I do not care for the dealership new car buying experience because so stressful, no matter it? how good a negotiator I am, they're always they're better. And like you always, always walk out of there, no matter what deal you get, you always feel like like you think you're getting a good deal, but they still rake you over the coals. Always. <laughs> always, right? And you know, I mean, I've used the wet the internet obviously to to get pricing and to do that but, I, but you know it's something tangible you want to go and look at it but it's it's a way to at least pre-qualify and that's and to and to do the the re research for you and that's what you know the seo does from a marketing standpoint there and that's one of the things that we do you know with the marketing is adapt to you know google's rules and to make sure that facebook is, is updated and the right stuff is being posted mm -hmm. and um making sure that you have all the the ducks in a row that are specific for these times something that you know was very relevant 18 months ago is nobody even goes on now what cares about now and who knows what's going to happen in the next three four five six months but it's real important guys to make sure that you are adapting your office adapting your message adapting your technologies to the times okay and can't stress it enough it is a game changer if if you do so and it's real important to make sure that you uh, you understand what what the options are, and uh, you know because you, and you're gonna I'm sure anybody's listening to this gets bombarded by two, three, four, five, ten, thirty-seven vendors a day mm -hmm. contacting you trying to sell you a particular service of some sort, and how do you sift through it, and how do you know what's what's good and what's not, and and how does it work and whatever. So um, you know. Luckily, we've done all the vetting. We know what is the best of the best. We know how to implement programs. And um, it's the smart thing to do is to work with a company, that, that an agency that understands the, the pulse to make your life easier. Focus on what you do, 
Okay. Yeah. Point, and, point in fact, you actually introduced me to Smile Snap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you what were, did I say at first? You were hesitant at first. You were like, yeah. nah, 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 nah. Nah, it's a waste of yeah. money. Exactly. It's not going to work. Yep. yep. <laughs> I, oh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, so and you not... pretty much like twisted my arm and said, look, try try for a few months. And right. sure enough, you know, it's 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 working out really well. And, and they're a, a new and evolving company, and they've gotten better and better at it, too, mm -hmm. you know, sure. over the last six, eight months. And they will continue yep. to you know, evolve and we actually get all, we get like a weekly newsletter now that I always share with my staff about sales techniques and you know, what happens if a patient you know, submits an inquiry but doesn't submit photos. And it, so we've gotten a lot better too, I think, at uh, approaching these patients. Now, having said that, it's kind of like the Invisalign concierge patients. So the conversion rate is not spectacular, but I would say probably of all the inquiries that we've gotten, maybe we have a 20% conversion rate, and, but it's easy. So like the ones that let's say maybe have an inquiry and then like they disappear, it's, it's a few minutes of, of, of time. But nevertheless, like you said, it's you know, probably over a hundred thousand dollars worth of worth. Of, it's actually easily sure. over a hundred thousand dollars exactly. of revenue. So right. not mm -hmm. a bad not a bad thing. Exactly. Yeah, so I do th definitely think that the way that you have my website and my all my all my social media marketing, all the marketing in general that, that your company does, fits really well with that with that kind of client that's looking for the convenience, you know, the newfangled <laughs> client, I suppose, you know, the right. modern yeah. contemporary you know, digital client. Uh, in addition, those patients, once they come to the office, are blown away. If you ask me, you ask me about two technologies. So the sec second technology would be dental monitoring, because those mm -hmm. same patients are, you know, look at when we tell them about dental monitoring, it completely makes sense to them, because it's also that sort of Uber Eats, you know, DoorDash kind of experience. Exactly, and, and we've and we back up a little bit. So we're talking about you know um, Smile Snap. Uh, listen, keep your eyes your eyes and ears open, guys, because um, in the upcoming podcast, we're going to have the CEO of um, Smile Snap on, and he'll be telling you about the, the journey and the programs and the platforms that that he's done and how he has successfully helped hundreds of practices um, to get to the level they are, just like he helped Dr. Glazer. And um, the same thing, if, if you listen to our previous podcast, you've heard the vice president and, and also the CEO of Dental Monitoring on some of our podcasts, and they've told you about the journey and, and the platforms in there. So, um, you know, once again, Liner Insider is the place to be when you want to understand everything going on there. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Okay. So as far as Dental Monitoring, um, I am a user as well. I am in Dr. Glazer's care, and I have my, my Invisalign. Um, and Dental monitoring has been a game changer. Instead of having to go to his office and be able to um, get my exams, it's incredible. And I'll, I'll talk about it from a layman's standpoint, and you can kind of go, you know, put a little bit more tech on it there. But it's a an app that you just um, t that you attach to a device that that the doctor gives you. It's a uh, what do you what do you what do you scan box? Scan box exactly, and what you, it's video. It just tells you what to do. It automatically takes videos and pictures, sends it automatically to the doctor and through artificial intelligence, um, you get an, a, a message or an email back from dental monitoring telling you to move on to the next aligner or keep it in because the teeth didn't move far enough. And it's, it's incredible. It makes my life so efficient. I don't have to, as I'm a busy person and to be up, if I had to go to doc, you know, Dr. Glazer's office every month or so, listen, I love you, but I prefer, I prefer not to. And it makes me, um, more compliant it makes me if if for some reason my teeth did not move i'm gonna make i make sure that my al aligners are in even more and i keep them in for 22 23 hours a day but um it makes you really want to make sure that you get to the next level and this technology has done that it's it's mind-blowing how, how really um with just a, within a minute of my time every week i do my scan how much this has helped me as far as keeping you know my my journey going and you know and Barry wants to talk a little bit from your side how it's it's, it's affected your practice so it's great first of all before we do that so what you're probably on a liner uh, 10 you're on stage 10 i'm on 11 i think right now yeah all right so you're on 11 and you've mm -hmm. been in my office twice you were in for your initial exam and your initial records and then mm -hmm. three weeks later to actually get your Invisalign start appointment, get your attachments, 
um, you get your aligner training and your your scan box training. And so far now you're on 11, and I I see your teeth in the your aligner fit every week, but you haven't had to set foot back in the office since that time. And I could tell exactly which teeth are tracking. We actually just talked. There's a couple of uh, front teeth that I'm trying to extrude, which tries to, which means trying to bring them down, Dean, because we wanted to give you like more of a full smile. And a couple of teeth are, you know, they're doing okay. They're, they may be lagging a, a little bit behind, but I can see that, and I can, and, and I know that we can keep going. Your liners are still fitting fine, and all of that. So it's it's pretty cool from my perspective too. So as, as far as the technology and what it does for my office is you know, fr from a very, very simplistic view, it reduces the patient load in my office on a daily basis. So instead of, let's say, in the olden days with Invisalign for adult patients, we would probably see them. I mean, in the very old days, we would probably see them once a month. Eventually, we got it up to, let's say, once every 12 weeks. But um, I will not see you at week 12, unless there's a reason to, unless you need IPR or you need attachment. But I probably won't see you again. What do you have, 20, Six. 26 stages? So if everything continues to track, we'll see you at stage 25. And at that point, we'll um, probably scan you for another batch. But it, it, so number one, from a simple, simplistic standpoint, it more than halves the number of patients in my practice on a daily basis. So from a public health standpoint, that's important because it, it allows us to reduce the volume of patients. We actually have four treatment chairs. We're only using two of them now. So that's, I mean, and, and that, you know, that's also just easier for the, for my staff to, you know, keep the chairs clean and all of that. But I used to run four chairs. Now I run two chairs yet. Uh, my, my, my gross income is the same and my net, in, my net income is higher because I work less days and I have less staff. So you, you think about that. You know, it's it's seeing working fewer days, fewer hours per day, working fewer days per week and month, taking more vacation um, with fewer staff. Um, yet, the, you know, the practice well, now last year we were flat, you know, which I was happy with. You know, we our income stayed the same in 2020 as it was in 2019. And I think uh, you were close being shut down for three months. That I don't that's, that's, that's not too shabby, right? You lose a quarter of your time and still have, you know, be either flat or even a little bit up from previous years. It was a bit up, actually. It was maybe, you know? um, you may be like a one or two percent up, but still um, yeah. pretty rem remarkable, you know, right? Yeah. Right. But I have I have one less staff member. Diana retired and we didn't have to replace her. I've reduced my hours even more. So now I'm working three days a week. Um, we used to be, you know, we used to be four and a half, then three and a half. Now it's three days per week. So my, you know, certainly well, granted my, you know, aligner fees are what they are. And my smile, uh, my, my, my smile snap is, is like not pennies, but it's a relatively small expense, but my dental monitoring fees, but even with the, the aligner fees and the dental monitoring fees, I've been, which have been pretty much flat. I now have lower staff salary uh, account, uh, lower staff, staff salary costs. Which so that's a, 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 my, my net income actually went up a bit. So there you go. And I'm working three days a week. It's Tuesday morning. I'm sitting here in my, you know, my house, with my feet up and I'll go into the office at one o'clock today. So which not too shabby. Great. And right there is the perfect example of how adapting to change, adapting technologies can make a difference in your business, your lifestyle, and overall makes you smile. You know, think about it. If you can work less, get just be good or, or better results, make more money, it's a no-brainer, guys. Think about it. <laughs> Duh. You know? Yeah, Dean, I have to tell you, as a practitioner, yeah. the change is difficult. You know, you happen to be very open-minded. Like, I don't think – you're just kind of like this guy that you, – you don't have a problem with change. You've always been that way. You're very progressive. But a lot of us out there are, are not, you know, are not that adaptable. And I'm, I, I'll give you a perfect example. So I bought my practice. I purchased it from a retiring orthodontist in 1995. And Dr. Mills worked Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 745 to 530, and Saturdays from 745 to 1230. And it was, mm, so now I've been in practice, what is that, 20, almost 25 years, 26 years, something like that. And it took me like 23 years to change my office hours. Like, and I, I hate getting, I was getting up at like six in the morning, getting ready for work. And I'm just not much of a morning person. And I was terrified to change those hours. And I uh, work with the people like Charlene White, you know, consultant and spoke to some, some friends who are very, very successful practices. And 
uh, also Michelle Shimon and all. And I was like, look, I want to take one day a week and I want to come in at nine o'clock. That was like my big leap. And they were like, so, <laughs> so just do it. Like, and I was like, so I don't know what I was afraid of. And of course it's fine. And now I, I start work in my in the mornings i start work at nine i don't have to come in at 7 30 anymore um i've eliminated two mornings altogether and nope i had have had not one complaint patients don't care as long as we're there to see them sure so it just goes to show you that you know that fear i think when you're trying something new you have to think about two things you have to think about what's the worst that can happen and you have to think about what's the best that can happen and i think people will find when you do an analysis like that the the upside is generally much greater than the potential downside. Look, let's say I change my office hours, and for some reason it was this huge complaint of patients who wanted to come in at seven thirty in the morning. I could just reinstitute it, right? I could just go back to the old ways. But you know, so, what if I tried it for six months? What 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 could happen that would be so terrible? And right, I, think exactly. I, I think you have to, doctors have to think that way. But making change, even for me, you know, it's it's I don't know why it seems so anxiety provoking, but it can be, you know. Exactly, and listen. As Barry just said, try it. If it doesn't work, you you go back. But yeah. what do you got, what do you got to lose? Yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, it's you like know? like you know what's funny too. Like I think the orthodontists, as much as they're afraid to let's say make make procedural changes or structural changes changes in their office, are very quick to hire staff. Like the, that, which is like you know, you hire staff. It's not so easy to fire staff, and they're very quick to add on overhead. And you make some of these other impulsive changes, but you, they're afraid to, let's say, try Smile Snap or try dental monitoring or something like that. It's it's interesting, you know. It that, is. Like, it is. like we have like a certain tolerance level for certain activities, um, but then we have a, a lower tolerance level for others that actually may be more significant to the practice, like let's say hiring too much staff. Right. Exactly. So, um, all right. So we're going to cut this off now. So we could keep talking and talking, but um, hopefully you guys. On the, got a good feeling for what is trending, what can be done, how it affects your practice, how it affects your livelihood, how it affects your bottom line, and um, how you need to kind of just stick your toes in the water, guys. You know, eventually you dive in, it feels good. You know, think about it, you jump, mm-hmm. get to a hot tub, you're like, ooh, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot. But then after you know, two seconds, you jump in, you're like, ah, <laughs> well, that's what this is like. So yeah. p- picture the ah moment. And that's what this that's what this is going to be. So um, now, before that, we sign off, is, is it okay if I throw a quick little uh, commercial in here? I guess do. since it's our, our podcast, we can do whatever we want. Well, but, sure. So you no know, doctors might say something like, "Okay, great, this all sounds great, but I don't know where to start." So we have uh, Gary Brigham and I run a course called the Insider's Guide to the Advanced Clear Aligner Practice. It's an online course, twelve week course. Our next group will be starting on Sunday. March the 8th, 7th, March the 7th, Mm -hmm. um, 2021. Um, And if you want more information about that course, which goes into not only the clinical orthodontics of Invisalign treatment, but also the practice management and dental monitoring and smile snap and and all of those things as well. So it's practice management for, for digital workflows and clear aligner, as well as clear aligner treatment. You can get more information if you go to clearalignercourse.com. Uh, and uh, take a look at that, and uh, hopefully you'll sign up. Because if you really feel like you need that push into the hot tub, um, Dr. Brigham and I are more than happy to do that. Because you know what, the water is fine. <laughs> exactly. Come on in. <laughs> Come on in. Come on in. Exactly. Your room. <laughs> right. Um, so with that said, guys, thanks everybody for listening. Um, we always love to hear feedback. So please follow us on social media. Um, follow us on LinkedIn. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram. And sign up at alignerinsider.com today. And um, as of now, the, the course is still um, free for, for new members. Um, who knows what's going to happen down the road, but right now, do it while you can. Hundreds and hundreds of videos are available for you to learn and to uh, take your practice to the next level. So with that said, this is Dean Steinman and Dr. Barry Glazer. Thanks so much for listening, guys. And everybody out there, just keep Keep smiling. It's um, the water's fine. Come on in. <laughs> All right. Bye bye.